What if I told you that we built something that shouldn't even be commercially possible? A workstation that accommodates four RTX 5090s into a 5U rack mount case by means of liquid cooling. <laughs> yeah, we did that. Today, I'm showing you one of the most extreme custom workstation builds we've ever done. This system isn't just powerful, it's a statement. We took what people said couldn't be commercially done and we made it happen. It's liquid cooled to ensure the RTX 5090s don't cook the rest of your components, yet as compact as possible for a rack mountable powerhouse that makes sense for all of you who value your space, your time, and the effort it takes for you to complete those intensive renders. Let's talk about the engineering. Building this was not just about the raw specifications, it was an engineering challenge. We had to manage thermal zones, power delivery, and we had to fit all the liquid cooling components in places where millimeters mattered. Millimeters. <clears throat> the whole system was pressure tested down to the blocks and everything combined. Fitting even two RTX 5090s in a rack mountable chassis is tough. Besides the fact their factory design doesn't accommodate for the clearance required because of the chassis lid, the height, right? They're massive and they run hot. They also pull serious power. So how do we fit four of these in a rack mountable case? You can't forget about it unless you're us. And to make that happen, we custom designed a full liquid cooling loop for all four GPUs and the CPU. And that meant building a bespoke loop that fits inside of a 5U chassis while still allowing for proper servicing, durability, and thermal headroom. And all the fittings and tubing was ran in a specific way to make sure that maintenance was easy to do. And the end result was a full synthetic load at 80 degrees Celsius, but was more often at 73C on average. This system can handle anything, anything you have in mind for it. And this will require some special considerations. From my experience though, most customers we work with already have these special considerations in mind. They've done all their homework. But if you wanna purchase a system like this for yourself and you don't quite understand what's needed, not a problem. We're gonna help you run through those special considerations, let you know everything you're gonna to need to do in order to accommodate your investment. Hello, YouTube. I'm Joseph Mundy, the Director of Technical Sales for AVA Direct, and we're one of the leading system integrators in the US known for our ability to build niche configurations all driven by our passion for building extraordinary systems. And that meant building a bespoke loop that fits inside of a 5U chassis while still allowing for proper servicing, durability, and thermal headroom. We used a compact high-flow dual pump setup, a low-profile reservoir, and soft tubing for ease of service and durability. The radiators were also positioned strategically for maximum efficiency. Every inch of tubing and every placement hardware was explicitly intentional and designed with precision. This is AVA Direct. This is what we do. And make no mistake, this configuration is designed and built for professionals. This is the kind of machine that laughs at rendering workloads, eats through AI training, and still has enough headroom to run a few VMs on the side. Okay, maybe more than a few, but for all of you in applicable fields to these kinds of use case scenarios, let us know in the comments what you'd use the machine for. We'd love to read about it. But while we're at it, let's hear from Zach and David regarding their experience with the machine, as well as how AVA Direct handles these kinds of configurations. I'm Zach Finelli. I'm the production manager here at AVA Direct, and I've always had a knack for working on things. I started very young with Lego, and then as I got older, I started messing with electronics and other things like that. I got into automobiles, and that kind of led me along pretty naturally to here. I started here as an assembler and worked my way up, so I know the process from the bottom to the top. And what's your position here officially? Production manager. Yeah. What does that involve? Um, so I maintain and oversee our testing procedures, our quality control procedures that spans from the moment that the components hit the production floor to the very end where we're making sure all the testing has gone as expected and that the system is up to up to our standards. What did you find most rewarding about the system while working on it and then seeing it to completion? I think the most rewarding thing about working on a system as unique as, as this 5U with 45090s is, is it's the type of execution that's not every day. So get to actually exercise our knowledge a little bit to to bring something unique and new to our customers. Right. All right, so tell me who you are, uh, what your position is here mm -hmm. at Direct, and also what kind of hobbies or interests from your childhood led you to where you are today? Okay, well, my name is David. I'm the Assistant Production Manager. And some hobbies from my childhood. Taking things apart. I definitely was a tinker. My parents would get very mad at me because I would take my toys apart and they never understood why. And I just wanted to know how they worked. So that naturally inquisitive kind of mind kind of segments into computers really well. So the idea behind building a system with four 1590s. Okay. 
So the idea behind building a system with four 5090s is I just saw a lot of people weren't doing it. I, it seemed complicated and it seemed like something that someone might really want. And it uh, looked fun actually. I was just kind of excited for the challenge. A lot of, a lot of power, a lot of thermals, little chassis. In conjunction with the testing, what were some parts that you were primarily involved in when it came to building the system, software loading, getting it tested? What were like specific roles you took charge in for building this kind of system? Um, so the actual, the actual build. So once we got everything, um, I did a lot of the initial air testing because we want to test the components to make sure that they actually are good before we incorporate them into a water loop. So that'll all that testing did most of the build process that was split between me and Zach. Obviously it's a long build. So when you're talking about 30 hours or something like that for the build, it helps to have two people working on it for sure. Uh, for the software loading, figuring it out, you know, four GPUs, uh, is not very common nowadays. So, you know, uh, if in case there's any driver hiccups or anything like that, um, figuring that out, the actual software loading. So again, drivers, any software that was necessary for the system, testing, benchmarking, things like that. Um, yeah, a lot of it, almost all of it. Based on your position and your role, what part did you play in building the 45090 system? And what would you consider to have been the most difficult part of that process? So that is actually a project that my assistant David and I took on several months ago at this point it was it was like a brainchild like what what can we do to make this possible we didn't have a customer yet but like we wanted to just make it available so someone could see that we could do it um it was actually it was it was a few day process of just looking for what the best parts were to fit together because when you're dealing with such a confined space such a high power draw so many components that might necessarily not necessarily be together like that, you know, like we have dual redundancy with the palms, we have multiple radiators. Um, we have an option that it could be configured with multiple power supplies. Uh, the one we just recently built though, we did 240 volt, but like a lot of different space considerations. So there was a lot of brainstorming around the parts, the shape of the parts, like with the reservoir and the, the pump and the different fittings and like the distribution block we use to kind of clean up the tubes back and forth for the graphics cards. Um, and then, yeah, we recently had a customer that saw that and was like, yeah, if we need that. And I, I would say it went pretty smoothly. We're, we're pretty proud of how it turned out. Yeah. So on the subject of it being a little chassis, what was the process of designing the wire management for such a system with all those parts kind of created in flight space? So for the wire management and, and figuring that out, we, it started from the very beginning. You know, we, we figured out what we were going to need to go into the chassis and we kind of did rough planning from there. You really can't know until you actually get everything in, in front of you. But with, you know, how much experience we have here, you can kind of visualize it, like almost clear as day, where things are gonna go, how they're gonna fit, and things like that. So what's so special with power supply? Um, so this system has a very high power demand, seeing that it has four 5090s and a 7970WX. So it's a 2800 watt unit, which, um, if you're familiar with U.S. electrical, that's not going to run on a 120 volt circuit. So it's 240 volt. Um, but that was something that fit the needs of this customer. We also have the ability to outfit two 120 volt power supplies in there that could be run on two different circuits. So it's really just whatever fits best. You know, I would definitely say the 2800 watt unit makes for cleaner execution. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Now power concerns are addressed, what about cooling? Like, how, what was the process of designing cooling setup for the 5D system, but then also verifying that the way it's designed is going to be sustainable long-term? Yeah, so um, with a system like this, it wasn't so much that we calculated per component. We knew it was gonna be very, very wattage heavy. So we said, let's just fit as much radiator as we can in this. Um, so for the Silverstone chassis that we use, we were able to use to 360 millimeter units. Uh, we did a thicker one on the front because we had the space for it. Um, and we used some industrial speed fans. So all of our primary intake fans, I believe they're 2,500 RPM, they're high RPM rating. And then we were limited to one exhaust fan. So we actually went with a 40 mil thick 6,000 RPM fan on the, on the rear. Just as you could imagine, having that many intake fans, it's hard to keep up with it. And that balanced it pretty good. What kind of tests in addition to making sure their cooling was adequate. What kind of tests were run on the system to not only make sure that it wasn't overheating, but also 
that the cars are getting proper power delivery. Yeah, so we have a pretty well-rounded and developed test suite that we've been using and updating and modifying over the years. Um, we utilize a program called OCCT. I, we have custom parameters that we've set to our liking to make sure that we're stressing the components appropriately. Um, most importantly for a system like this is that you need a full system stress. So we do, we do have a section of our testing that is a full system stress test. And that was actually one that we focused on very heavily with this system. And we actually had to make a few revisions as we went just because we kept, we weren't happy with it. It was like still too hot, still too hot, still too hot. Involved a little bit of rearrangement and, you know, namely definitely upgrading that rear exhaust fan like I was talking about, because we were just like, this normal exhaust fan is not keeping up. Were there any kind of specific safety reliability tests that we ran on this system? Safety from like a power perspective. Mm -hmm. Oh, liability from uh, being used in field twenty four seven type field. Oh yeah. So for for safety and reliability things like that, we just used our pretty standard testing. So it's it's way more in depth than most people's testing. So uh, some competitors will use you know a two or four hour burn in test for for systems. So all our systems are fourteen hours. So that covers a combined full load. So one hundred percent load. Worst case thermal scenario. Does CPU alone, memory, GPU alone, transient as well covers all of that and again 14 hours full burn-in full you know power requirements if it doesn't pass you know that then it's not going to pass anything i think gives us customer confidence with building this kind of system what we do put our customer confidence that if they bought a system from us of this stature that it's something that they could not only rely on but it will do the job that they expect i think our best strength with building the confidence from the customer with these types of systems is our communication, but not only that, the knowledge that backs up the communication. I think we are excellent at communicating the technicalities to them. You know, for a system like this, there's gonna be a little bit of back and forth internally for us, but I think because we're, we're so professional about it and we know what we're doing, we can communicate that with the customer, you know, communicate our heat concerns and what we're doing to address it. So the customer understands like, we're not clueless. It's just, this is an R and D process we're conducting on your behalf and we're keeping you posted. And I think that builds a lot of confidence. Also no like eight to 10 to 12 week turnaround. This is something we've already ironed out all the bugs. So if somebody buys it, so it's sailing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially if you were to purchase it as configured, it's gonna be just as smooth as any other system because we've we've done the initial testing in the R&D, we've done the documentation, we know to what to expect out of the system. We have a reference point. Right. Um, now, if you looked at this system and decided maybe it wasn't the right fit for you, maybe you wanted Quadros, yeah. um, even that I don't think would really set things back too much because you know, we've worked with we've worked with this form factor. It's just a matter of making sure the parts that you want work the way that you want them to. Okay. What do you think makes AV Direct the ideal company to build such a system? So the reason why someone should be confident that the system that they're gonna get from AV Direct is gonna be good is because really we're just you know what, we're proud of what we do. This isn't this isn't just a job for a lot of people here. A lot of people here loved computers before they started and they got the job here because they love computers and it lets them do the kind of fun and exciting stuff that they always wanted to do. You know, I always wanted to build computers. Like that's, that's just always what I wanted to do. You know, I was, people were like, I want to be an astronaut. I don't want to be an astronaut. I want to build computers and overclock them and look at hundreds of frame rates and games and huge benchmark numbers. And it's like, it's, it's, it's the passion. It's the passion, it really is. You don't get that a lot of places. And it's the attention to detail. It's the, I'm proud of what I do. I, I don't want anyone to get a system that's not happy with it. I want every single person to open that box up. They spent good money on that computer. Open the box up, hook it up, and it's perfect. You know, it's updated. There's no windows up, all the drivers are good. Thermals are good. It performs great. That makes me happy. And I think that's the difference. It's not just a paycheck. It's, it's if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. And I have not worked a day in my life in the last four years that I've worked here. Now, before I divulge some of the benchmarks we ran and the results, I'd like to just take a few moments to go over the basic details of the workstation. We're gonna stick the core specifications in the interest of time. The case is manufactured by Silverstone. It's the RM52. And this chassis is designed to support liquid cooling hardware specifically. The motherboard that we use is the ASUS Pro WS WRX90E Sage. And this is specific to Threadripper. 
and the Threadripper processor we used is a 7975WX 32 core processor. The four graphics cards that we installed in the workstation are the ASUS RTX 5090 Tough Gaming variants, and they're running at full power and full clock speed. Why do I say that? Well, I say it specifically because it's a common tactic when building a system with multiple GPUs to either undervolt or reduce clock speeds. It helps to reduce the generation of heat. Uh, and this is not something that we really had to deal with because we're liquid cooling everything. Um, and you want to reduce voltages in the instance where you don't have an adequate power supply, which isn't a problem for our configuration thanks to the Superflower Lead X Titanium 2000 watt power supply. Now, this is a 240 volt power supply that can operate down to 200 volts, and this will require some special considerations. From my experience, though, most customers we work with already have these special considerations in mind. They've done all their homework. But if you want to purchase a system like this for yourself and you don't quite understand what's needed, not a problem. We're going to help you run through those special considerations, let you know everything you're going to need to do in order to accommodate your investment. Now that that's all out of the way, let's move on to the memory. The system has a total of 256 gigabytes of memory, and the focus on this machine was purely graphics horsepower. But if you did want to run several VMs, like I indicated earlier, you'll want to double that memory or even max it out. It really just depends on your needs. Now, the system has a single SSD installed. It's the Samsung 2TB 990 EVO Plus, one of the greatest value SSDs you can get for the money. Very high performance and reliable. Emphasis on this machine was not so much on storage. So I'm assuming the end users probably got that handled either through a basic NAS or something way more extensive. Either way, depends on the use case scenario. Moving on to benchmarks. Considering the system has four 5090s, I'm sure you're all curious how it performs and scales, right? We're gonna go over some of those benchmark numbers and so you can see what to expect and what applications will take advantage of four GPUs. If you were not already aware, just because your machine has more than one GPU installed doesn't mean that every application is gonna either recognize it or utilize the resources to boost performance. For example, practically every Adobe application in existence will use a single GPU only, and it generally only favors clock speed over core count. So a Threadripper system to this magnitude would be complete overkill for Photoshop, Lightroom, and After Effects. Now, finally, onto the numbers. For our testing, we ran three primary benchmarks, AIDA64, Luxmark, and Octane. And we're gonna start with AIDA64, and for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna focus on the double point precision performance because I feel that, that this machine is primarily gonna be used for complex simulations or filling out large models. For a single GPU, we have 437 frames per second. The next number is in theory, because IDA64 has issues with how it scales two GPUs, but wants to assume that both GPUs are separate. And so we gather this number based on the theoretical number that you would expect, and based on the remaining results we received. For two GPUs, we have 877 frames per second. For three, we have 1,316 frames per second. And for four, we have 1,745. For our IDA64 bench, it appears you get your money's worth dollar per dollar. Now we're gonna move on to Luxmark. Luxmark for a single GPU has a score of 23,031. For two GPUs, a score of 46,160. For three GPUs, 69,137. And for four GPUs, we have a score of 92,253. And again, with Luxmark, it appears you not only get your money's worth, but there's also an additional performance increase with each GPU you add. It's more than 100%. It's like 101, but it's still interesting to note. Lastly, we have Octane. Whew, there's a substantial amount of numbers displayed for Octane's benchmark, so we're just going to display them here for you to review. Feel free to pause the screen and take a look so you can digest some of this information. In the end, though, it verifies what we saw in the first two benchmarks, which is that every application that takes advantage of multiple GPUs, you are truly getting an additional 100% increase in performance with each GPU you add. Largely, this has to do with the fact that the WRX90 platform provides full bandwidth for each PCI Express 16X slot. The CPU has all the available PCI Express lanes to support the cards running at, in tandem, so that's great. Well, this concludes this week's AVA Regs. I hope you all enjoyed the content, and if you wish to see more exciting news and developments from AVA Direct, whether it's new product releases or exciting groundbreaking builds we create for users like you, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. A link to view and purchase the build will be provided in the description below as well. If you have any questions on doing so, feel free to call or email. Again, I'm Joseph Mundy, and we'll see you next time. If you like the PC in the video, be sure to contact our sales team by emailing sales at aviadrock.com or head to the website by clicking the link within the description below. You can choose from many pre-built options, gaming or workstation based, or use the configurator to build the PC of your dreams. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so you can be notified of future content and give the video a like in support of our channel. You can follow the variety of our social media channels by visiting aviadirect.com forward slash community 
And you can also join our Discord if you wish to engage in discussions related to custom-built PCs.